first, the Rolling Stones, Elton John and David Bowie, some of music's biggest names, and they've all written some of their greatest songs in one London street, Denmark Street, affectionately known as London's Tin Pan Alley, has become famous for its record stores and studios. It's now being celebrated in a new documentary, The Tales from Tin Pan Alley, with the Sex Pistols, Glenn Matlock, among the famous musicians paying tribute. Well, I'll be talking to him and the filmmaker in a moment about one of the homes of British music. It is one of London's most iconic streets, its record stores and studios providing the soundtrack to the swinging 60s and beyond. It all started before the First World War, when this narrow street in Soho became the birthplace of sheet music publishing. Budding young songwriters would come here hoping to make it big, and by the 50s, it had become a hub for future stars. David Bowie, The Who, and Black Sabbath all recorded here. Elton John even worked as a tea boy at Mills Music. And of course, the Sex Pistols lived above number six, going on to record their demos there. Fast forward half a century, its historic venues have come under threat from nearby developments. But though the landscape has changed, its musical heritage survives. Denmark Street remains a magnet for musicians dreaming of writing music history of their own. Well, Glenn Matlock, bassist with the Sex Pistols, is here, and Henry Scott Irvine, who produced his own documentary about the street. Um, guys, thank you so much for coming in to talk That's to me about this. Good. Henry, let's start with you, because you made this film. It is a fascinating history, isn't it? Um, but it's the history, but also you want to reflect in your film, I suppose, the fact that you're trying to preserve the street's history. Well, the film grew out of the campaign, mm. Save Tin Pan Alley. Yes. And um, interestingly, at one meeting we had, we were there with Councillor Sue Vincent, who's the... Uh, ward councillor mm -hmm. for St Giles. It's just on the other side of Soho. And she said, well, maybe somebody should make a film. And you did. Well, um, Councillor Vincent, we have <laughs> made that film. She probably wasn't aware of that, but well, we've done it. Let's uh, share a little bit more then, because I know you hear from lots of different voices in the film. Let's just hear it from one of them right now. They're letting us keep the Sex Pistols grade two listed bog, though the Sex Pistols did pinch the chain. Glenn, uh, Sex Pistols, you are. Can you um, fill us in on that uh, little detail there? Oh, what the happened? What's detail. that about? Well, I think that one there was, looks pretty bad, but the one when I was there originally, uh -huh. it was even worse than that. And it's a really old building. It goes back to early 1800s, yeah. I think. And, and funny enough, one of the reasons I got involved with Henry about this is not only has it got a whole music kind mm. of connotations, mm -hmm. um, which is a big deal thing, but um, I found my grandmother my dad's mum's birth certificate and she was actually born in Denmark what an amazing Street. connection and I didn't, you know all the time I was there I lived there in 1970 incredible you lived there with the band um, me and Steve num Jones above number band. six right yeah it, it's a, where the he was standing there's like yeah. an outbuilding it's an old sweatshop or something like that Victorian or even proceed preceding that and we had a rehearsal room and that and we got it from Badfinger who had it originally well it's really yeah. interesting there you are you've got a blue flag because it's now achieved because the Sex Pistols and the graffiti I've been in there and I've seen that graffiti I can't repeat a lot yeah. of what it says obviously yeah. on air yeah. <laughs> as you can imagine <laughs> but you managed to get grade two listed I because think of I that I managed to save it for the for the nation because I had the place again in the early 80s after the Pistols were there and I wanted a bit of a change. So I actually wallpapered with anaglyptic paint of her over the top and painted it. Goodness me. And then I went round with my sons who wanted to see, who were younger and who wanted to see the thing. Yeah. And I went in there and it was still the same as when I'd done it. I it's said, would you know? Underneath. And he went, no. I said, look. <laughs> and anyway, I went back a few months later and they peeled it off and there's all, all these cartoons stories. of Jonathan. You know? And Henry, you know, your campaign, it, it is about preserving these little bits of, of history, I suppose, on the street that has meant so much to creativity in the capital as well. Well, it's a, it's a 110 year history. Mm. It's 30 voices, people who lived and worked in the street. So it's mm. their testament, beginning with Dame Vera Lynn, who aged 100, gave us an exclusive just after her birthday. Uh, it goes right through with people who like um, um, David Bowie's bass player, Amazing. Herbie Flowers, uh, some of the guys who wrote songs. We've mm. got the guy who wrote Delilah, 
um, Bar Barry Mason for Tom Jones. So it's a very thorough history. Kenny Jones as well. Contributed. We got Kenny Jones from the Small Faces. Who and listen, listen very, very quickly. We're almost just about out of time, but I know you, you've managed to save a couple of the venues. They've re been reinstated again. You've got the Grade 2 listed, but your campaign still continues, doesn't it? You've got about five seconds to tell me it does, really. <laughs> We're going to show this film at the Fusion Film Festival. <laughs> Come and see it. We'll tell you more then in the new year. Henry, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Henry Glenn, thank you so thank much for coming much. to thank talk you. to me. Thank, thank you. you.